Today we're going to remove the rear covers and take a good look at this bike. Okay, removing these rear plastics are uh, relatively simple so long as you can get the bolts out. One here, one here, one here, one here are the simple ones with hex heads that are well out by out of the dirt so they should come out easy. But the ones I'm concerned about uh, this mud guard flap here rather than detach it around the top there I want to detach it from the bottom there's three on each side like that and they are either Phillips head or in the case of one of those which I think is a bodgy bolt a straight headed bolt they're, they're down in the mud and uh, I suspect will be quite difficult but let's have a go okay we have another casualty that bolt unscrewed about four turns it was quite loose but it then wouldn't come out I don't know whether it's stripped halfway along the thread or something or, or I suspect that's the case so anyway we'll be able to lift the plastic off and see what's going wrong with that one all right those three bolts are out in fact I got them all out without shearing those off but none of them were original so they'll all be replaced but I haven't got threads to uh, be repaired so that's a good one this one like the other side was a quarter 20 bolt you yanks that understand that language and it needed like a 716 nut on the back or 11 millimeters in my language these two were actually original bolts they were uh, stepped bolts similar to the ones that were in the front guard one on each side I didn't work out that until I drilled the centers out of them and uh, I don't know whether they were going to release anyway but I buggered both of those up and two original bolts so you could say that's another six casualties or at least six bolts I'm going to have to find when I put that back together again but uh, she's now ready to lift off there's a little clip up behind on this little uh, um, oh there it is off there so you see that little clip on there that was catching up on me before but uh, she's now ready to come clear and uh, there it is look it appears I can do this one-handed so I'll follow through keep the camera rolling and uh, lift that clear to join the other piece from yesterday oh well she's naked and we'll go looking now and giving it a bit of a brush up because uh, it uh, just appears to be a lot of dirt and dust, more so than rust. Um, I'll do a quick scan around. This is the little storage box. It's got a sort of rubber top on it that gives it some waterproof when that black cap's down. And uh, now there's access. to the rear axles, the rubbers on the rear axles, giving those wheels a bit of a wobble just to see what sort of play there is in the uni joints or there's normally a bit of clock in them anyway and that doesn't feel like much at all. So that's good. Uh, I mentioned when I was taking the front cover off that there's a power 
source fuse and that's the little plug there for plugging in something that might be riding on a trailer spray unit or a pump or something the oil fill caps here coming around further things that you got to look up under the skirt to do you can now do from the top down the oil sight glass the oil filter cover the clutch adjustment the air box rear shock this is the cable going to the handbrake on the left hand side it uh, see how it doesn't it doesn't move when you you apply the foot pedal the the, the the rear brake cables connected there runs through here and down to the back wheel this one only uh, lifts the pedal when it's pulled or the handbrake's pulled there's a bit of slop in that needs adjusting uh, yeah, I can now take photos of how all this stuff's routed. I suspect that they are all in the original positions and in places that I didn't know when I was trying to reassemble my bike. Um, that's the high-low range. You've got to push it to operate it. Um, the uh, coils here tucked in under that rubber flap sorry if I go out of shot I've got to look next to the camera at times to see what I see for myself what I'm looking at that's the rear brake pedal I was just discussing um, the rear suspension arms come right through to the forward of the wheel here which almost makes it like a trailing arm on the swing arm makes it a fairly strong construction there's breather tubes coming up um, from the rear axle uh, okay that one right comes from the rear brake drum all the way up to here I thought it was a brake a, a breather or a breather from the uh, uh, air box there's a few tubes on the air box I think one there and this one uh, breathers on the uh, air box or drain hoses in case water gets into the system I'm looking forward to taking this off and seeing what's been left for us there but uh, all right uh, that'll do us the bolt that was in here on this side at the top was a hex head bolt that unscrewed three or four turns and then stopped and then it uh, you can see from that it uh, stripped its thread part way along and uh, wouldn't come out anymore so I put vice grips on the head of the bolt and twisted it and uh, bent it and effectively the head of the bolt broke off allowing me to take the cover off and now I've just put the vice grips on the remaining section that was still in the hole and gave it a bit of a twist out and it actually the rest of it did sort of unscrew from that hole now I don't know whether the threads in that hole still any good they're m6 threads but uh, at least i've got the piece out and uh, i can deal with that in some other way if need be i'm going to open up this air box for the first time this wedge piece was in the rear storage compartment so it's going to be interesting to see whether it's been left out of here i assume it has and what sort of air filter therefore is in place and whether it's stayed in place without that wedge piece but uh, 
I don't know who's been doing the maintenance on this bike, but we'll see what we'll see what's happening in here. Right, now that looks like an original Suzuki filter and this looks like a uh, fabricated wedge which um, has done the job so the uh, real piece wasn't too far away. I'll chuck those in there. So, somebody who pretty much knows what they're doing has identified that that piece was missing and uh, has made those. That's better than what I would have thought. So, that now is going to let that uh, cleaner air filter come out. It's got the metal internal and the uh, proper fitting on the back. So, that's and it feels it feels oily and it doesn't look particularly dirty so that's a good thing and uh, now that I've got the the wedge as well I can uh, put that back in place and drop the wedge in and I'm oh yeah I can do it one-handed sorry if I'm taking you out of frame uh, and uh, that's what it's supposed to be so that's uh, one concern I was worried whether the motor might have been dusted because the air filter was uh, not properly placed and we'll put this uh, little cap cover back on and now one of the screws has dropped down. I'll have to go and fish that out. But uh, yeah, that's uh, the all the air filter story, which is a good one. I've decided to remove a few items that are fairly easy to take off because I want to get to the carburetor. I want to check the uh, inlet manifold pipe for leaks. And I'm going to start with this storage box on the back, maybe the heat shield over the exhaust, then the uh, air box. Uh, I'll probably leave the snorkel in place, but with the air box out of the way, I may well be able to get to the carburetor and remove items that are basically on top of the motor there to... Uh, give me clear access to the top of the motor. Everything needs at least a good dust down and maybe lubrication. So some of these things I think are fairly easy to remove and I'm going to make a start on that, starting with just this uh, storage box. I think there's only two screws diagonally across that to remove that and I think I can unplug a tail light and then that's away. And then I can give it a good clean when it's off. So that's a simple one to start with. So that's the heat shield underneath the uh, storage box. It's still uh, zinc plated. Mine was rusted through completely. And uh, that might have been because it was getting hot from the exhaust because the bike was overheating. Now I've noticed in the back of the air box, there's a screw missing there. So that's just something to note. When I take that out, that's that's what I'm taking out next. I think I'll uh, release the clamps on the front, and hopefully you're able to lift that air box up at the rear to get them away from the uh, snorkel and the uh, intake pipe on the side of the carburetor. So let's see how we go with that. A lot of people have had issues removing the carburetor and I don't think I'm making things any easier here. I've released 
the top of the snorkel there, just the one bolt, and slid the snorkel forward a little bit, which has enabled it to be disconnected from the airbox. I was hoping to be able to move the airbox enough to get it to come out, but it's got to go sideways quite a bit to uh, miss. It tucks in under that rail on that side, and it actually tucks in underneath this bar at the rear, so it doesn't look like it'll go forward and uh, I was hoping to bring it out, bring it out like this and pull it off the back of the carburetor to the sa save crushing this pipe, which is traditionally the way you fit the carburetor. You've got to fit the carburetor up and jam that pipe in, and it's a real hassle. People have a lot of trouble with that, but I'm going to keep going and let you know how I get on. Well, I have been able to work that airbox out, uh, but I don't know whether it was any easier. I had to get this front pipe off the front of the airbox, and I now need to release breather pipes on the side, and I believe there's another one underneath uh, to remove the airbox completely. This pipe I've disconnected at the front, where at the front where it connects to the back of the carburetor. I think that's come away in the process of me prizing the back of that up and also moving it sideways to clear this side which goes under the chassis rail. So I'm not sure whether refitting it like that's going to be any gain, but uh, I, uh, these things are worth a try and uh, it looks like I haven't damaged anything. I've, I've got the air box out and again, I can give it a 360 degree clean when it's out of the bike. So I'll continue on. So that's the air box released. Um, there are three breather tubes attached to it. One there, one underneath there, and one on the back there. Now, inside this, there's two compartments. So these two front ones are to the f main air filter compartment. And that rear one is a drain at the back of the snorkel compartment. So those drains, that's the one for the snorkel component compartment. It comes down the side of the motor and down the bottom there there's a cap that can be removed. This one um, is actually a crankcase breather, it appears. goes into the top of the crankcase there and comes across there. So this one would uh, suck um, crankcase fumes into the airbox um, and the third one which is also in the filter side this one both of these ones are in the filter side this one comes across and down here by the uh, rear brake mechanism and it's got a plug in it so it doesn't suck air through there this one can't suck air as well and I must check on my own bike that I've got both of those drains plugged because otherwise thinking about it the engine sucking air it, you, know, you don't want it to be sucking air up these tubes it's okay to be sucking air out of the crankcase and potentially burning any blow-by fumes in there so that's what that's about Over 12 months ago, this bike was playing up and difficult to start and a mechanic came out to look at it and advised that, look, it's got problems that are probably not worth repairing as it's 25 years old and it's uh, just going to get harder and harder to do. I'm going to take you along with me as I fix this, so get out to your shed and have a play yourself. 